It's time for our weekly exercise while we try to destroy Doc's will. Marvel's definitely helping us out with the latest revelations regarding MJ and Spider-Man and the X-Men. But I am trying to do my part. I'm going to do whatever I can to make Doc quit comic books, the thing that he's loved since he was like five years old. So I make him read what I pre we presume to be the worst comic books of the week. Sometimes we hit them. Sometimes we miss them. This week, we have a comic book that's actually not all that bad. It'll be interesting to talk about Captain America number zero. But thankfully, Trial of the Amazon's Wonder Girl number two delivered the goods. Fantastic art, but absolute terrible story and payoff to this big mystery about who killed Queen Hippolyta. But I do want to say, how you do it, Doc? Are you still into comic books? Um... You know what? This is sapping my will to live every fucking week. Um, but hey, you gave me two comics with uh, with actually pretty good art this week. So, I, I, I you know, it, it's kind of like uh, when Bloodshot from Tim Seeley and Brett Booth came out, and I told you just ignore all the 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 word boxes and only look at the pictures and make up your own story in your head. That's kind of what both of these are this week. Yeah, absolutely. Some very interesting art. Although I will say we'll start out with Trial of the Amazon's Wonder Girl number two from DC Comics, Joel Jones, writing and illustrating. The composition and technical aspects of it are very good, but it was a little bit disjointed. I almost didn't know what was happening. Apparently, they're telling three different stories concurrently with a ton of, of splash pages. Yes, but they don't do a very good job of when they connect, like actually connecting them when the when the bottom one connects it just vanishes and the middle section gets bigger and gets to take the like three quarters of the page and then when the top one connects it becomes full page but there's no like moment where they are connecting storytelling wise it was not all that exceptional visual storytelling was a little off but the composition the technical aspects of it is a beautifully rendered comic book as far as the art goes as far as the story, this thing is absolute crap, Doc. So the main story that's going on in the middle the whole time is Cassie Sandsmark has figured out who the murderer is. And she's telling Queen Nubia who killed Queen Hippolyta. Apparently, did you know that Queen Nubia and Queen Hippolyta were scissoring? I was unaware. I don't, I don't get this. I was unaware of this. Honestly, though, you know, rendered by Joelle Jones, didn't really mind it. This felt strange, kind of came out of nowhere, but the main story is Cassie Sandsmark talking forever. She could just say, hey, I know who the murderer is, and then name the murderer, but we don't want to do that. That would, I guess, be too fast. So she just talks about why it can't be everyone that it should be. And she goes to it, she's like, it can't be the Esquideros, and it can't be Atalanta and her crew because of this and this and this. And then when she finally reveals who the murderer is, who and it doesn't make any sense, and when she says it has to be this person, I don't know how she came to that conclusion. It still doesn't make any sense to me. I don't no. think she really makes her case, but everyone just believes her because Artemis went down to Brazil with Cassie and would, kn would have known about this poison. So it must have been her. She acknowledges that she is the murderer. And then she says, I'll never tell you why. It's for me to know and you to find out. I was like, are you serious? You wasted all these pages to get to the big climax of what this event is supposed to be about, the murder, and then you don't even say why, because there is no motivation for Artemis to do it. It doesn't yeah. make any sense whatsoever. Look, this was, this was Joelle Jones trying to be Agatha fucking Christie. I'm betting she watched, like, one of those, like, Death on the Nile or whatever, the, the Mummy one, the Orient Express one, whichever one of the new or trying to be Hercule fucking Poirot. Solving crimes, the only problem is didn't understand any of the deductive reasoning nope. involved in any of that made absolutely no case for it except for well she knew that this smelled like this and, and then whenever whenever it came to justification she's like I, honestly i can't think of a good motive so um fuck it we're just gonna play the i'm not gonna tell you motive look joelle please for the love of god keep drawing Stop fucking writing. Well, I don't blame and, this completely on Joel Jones. I imagine Clune Rad and Stephanie Williams and Stephanie Phillips and Vita Ayala had a big part in this. And then she's trying to execute it, you know, their terrible story with no motivation and make the story make sense. But it didn't. Or, or she just gave the fuck up. 
Like, I would say you fridged Hippolyta, but nobody got any character growth out of it. Yo. They should have just made Nubia the murderer. Then we we're like, you can't be queen. She's like, I already am queen. I'm yeah. To make decision. Like, that would have made sense if it would have been, you know, Nubia being the current queen and you then finding out later that Hippolyta was going to come back and take the throne back. Or she wasn't, she, but she was scared that she might. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it made Cassie look like an absolute moron. There's also another part, apparently, where she's, like, being carried. I'm like, Jesus, this is supposed to be a superhero. Then the big reveal, I guess, at the end is the thing that's been happening kind of at the top, I believe. Diana has woken up, and apparently the door has risen and taken the place of the palace. Yeah, the palace. <laughs> They keep talking about this door and making sure it's protected. Ain't nobody gone and fucking looked at it in like three days. And then the door apparently becomes like 400 times the size and the size of a big. fucking palace. Just so get over. So they're going to be fighting something coming through Devil's Doorway or Doom's Doorway, whatever it is. Yeah, that I just wish they'd fight the stupid Venom thing. That, that comic book suck. I'll give it a two because the, the composition... And the coloring of the, of the art and everything was good. And, uh, you know, I, a little scissoring here one, and there. I never heard anybody. But otherwise, yeah. that comic just sucked. One and a half because of how bad this, the visual storytelling was. But it goes up from one because of the scissoring. <laughs> it could have been worse. Now let's go over to something that was, I don't know if it's delightful. I don't even know that I recommend it. But Captain America number zero from Tochi. Anya Bucci, Colin Kelly, and Jackson Lanzig was actually not terrible. This is the lead-in issue, essentially, for both of the new Captain America comics we're going to have coming out. We're going to have Sam Wilson, Captain America from Tochi. We're going to have Steve Rogers, Captain America from Colin Kelly and Jackson Lanzig. And the art in this is really what we need to talk about first. There are some times when this is one of the best illustrated comics I've seen in a very long time. A little bit reminiscent of Alex Ross, but different, kind of photorealistic. But there are other times when there's action and they blur the images out that I don't like it. If this is your kind of art style and you like photorealistic, this might be the best comic that you've seen in two years. It's good. It reminds me of like an Alex Ross meets uh, Assad Ribic when Assad's giving it like his all. I genuinely, genuinely enjoyed the the art in this comic i had very low hopes going into this book i'm like okay decent cover but it's just typical put a good cover artist on it and shit interior art like always but in looking at this i was like holy shit the the interior art actually matches the cover and it's not only good composition but solid storytelling there's only a few places where there's i guess deficiencies in the artist but he's an artist that i've never heard of before so this might be very very early into his career i haven't the slightest clue no idea who the, where the fuck this guy comes from his name is Mattia uh, De Lulis. I think that's how you pronounce it, but I have never seen him either. I hated almost every single word written on this page. I thought it was perfectly fine. I didn't think it was great. Like, I didn't even think it was good, but it wasn't bad. It was. You have Armin Zoloff, and he's going to, I guess, launch a rocket that's going to turn everyone into dinosaurs to save the Earth You know, because we're all bad polluters or whatever. And he was going on in this monologue talking about how, you know, America is terrible and all this stuff. I was just shocked that Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers both stood up for themselves and what they represent. I thought that was encouraging, at least. Except for Sam Wilson. He didn't even fucking disagree. He just said, yeah, that's the America I want. Arms all with fear finishes teardown of America that asked Sam Wilson, is that the America that you want? And Sam Wilson just said, yeah, it is. And then he defeated the enemy protecting America. I think actions speak louder than words. I thought it was done well enough. I guess if that's what they were, if that was the story they were going for, store like writing wise, I, I'd say it missed the mark. I'm shocked he didn't fall to his knees and beg for Zolas, you know, forgiveness. That's what had to happen in the past. That's fair. I, I will say that it's handled it a little bit more fair. But this was a whole issue just about. Is there a reason Sam Wilson's back in the Captain America costume? Because last we saw him just like a couple of weeks ago, he was still in his Falcon costume. And now suddenly he's back in Captain America costume. I have another question for you, Doc. And I don't know why he's in Captain America costume. I think it's just because the comic's coming out. 
when did he get super strength? Because at one point he like rips the panel off of a fucking rocket as it's moving, which Never. is something that you would need super strength for. I thought he intentionally wouldn't take the super serum. He would have previously had to use his wings to cut in there like fucking vulture style because he doesn't have super strength. He also couldn't have handled the seven G's or whatever that was up there. And he claims that it's only because of all of his flight training. Look, I'm sorry, but everything about Sam Wilson being Captain America doesn't make sense. He can't wield the shield. He literally can't do it. There's three. We've already covered this. There's three guys other than Steve Rogers or somebody that's taken the super soldier serum that can do it. And it's Hawkeye, Spider-Man and Cable. Those are the three. Well, actually, and, you know, Bucky. This is just typical Marvel make Sam super strong because he needs to be for this scene. And then talk about how he was so righteous in not taking the super serum. Did they mention the super serum? I didn't even hear no. that part of the story. It's just, I was like, why the hell could he do that? But obviously they win and they do destroy the robot. And Zoloft was trying to shame them about America. And I was, I was proud to see that they didn't give in and they didn't try to make excuses. They said, we stand by America, what America is that, you know, it has its problems, but that's what we fight for. They destroyed him. They win the day, and then they have a, a back and forth about who should be which Captain America. And one of them can be uncanny Captain America. We can have an amazing Captain America and a spectacular Captain America. Um, I, it's whatever. There's only one Captain America. We have a Captain America. We have a Falcon. I think it's stupid that we're using the same name on both of them. I think it's stupid that they're trying to get over two versions of Wolverine and whatnot. Uh, by the end, it lost me. Let's put it that way. Well, I mean, yes, it comes back to typical stupid Marvel current day brand dilution and them not recognizing that it's a bad idea. Sam is Falcon. Steve is Cap. Yeah, so by the end, it kind of lost me, but the art's really fantastic. The story's not terrible. I don't necessarily recommend it because I don't think it's that good. And I think the the two comics that are coming out are going to be bad because we've read Tochi uh Black Panther Legends, which is awful. I read enough of Colin Kelly and Jackson Lanzig's uh, synopsis for Captain America, what they're going to do with Steve Rogers. I think that's going to be even worse. So I'm not looking forward to what comes out of this. But as a single issue, if you want to read something Captain America that's not awful, this is something you can go for. As a one-shot issue and as a worst of the week candidate, it is right up there with only Reckoning War Alpha. That Dan Slott, Fantastic Four Watcher thing as least offensive, but still bad comic book that had some redeeming qualities. Absolutely. If you want to see some great art, it, it does suck that this guy's not going to be the interior artist of either of the comic books because he's going to overshadow what they're doing in those books, in my opinion. I think it would probably just take him. We get two issues a year out of the guy. If you're wondering why I am so certain that this Colin Kelly Jackson Lansing Captain America is going to suck balls because I read some interviews. I got up to date on the details. Definitely check this out. And I think you'll agree with me that Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, Steve Rogers, Captain America, Sentinel Liberty comic is going to suck balls.